got him all done. Took him over to my flap sander over there and uh, I think I've explained that pretty much in past videos so I won't go into that now. But anyway, just sanded him off there but not enough to remove the chips or anything just to cut those edges down. And uh, finished burning him. You'll notice that I added a little leather strip across the top, just a piece of uh, leather. And you probably never believe where I got this leather. I was down at a thrift store one day and they had a woman's coat, leather coat, hanging in there, a big long leather coat. And I bought that thing for just a couple of bucks. And I've been using that thing for, I bet you, 40 years now, cutting strips of leather off for horse bridles and just various things. It's the best thing, one of the best things I ever bought. Anyway, what I did was I just, let me get his helmet off there, just uh, wrapped it over the top of the bill and then down underneath here, glued it. Whatever you do, if you do try something like this, don't ever use super glue. Super glue will take that leather and it'll just, just crunch up and become extremely brittle. You want to use something that's not going to get brittle over time. So I pinned it down in here and glued these two points. And then uh, once that was dry, the next day I thinned down. I, I squirted some uh, just, just yellow glue up here on top and with a wet brush just brushed it out and worked it in under the edges and everything so that's locked on there permanently. So anyway, now next step for him is head over to the paint table which is what we're going to do right now. Okay, over here at my messy paint station, it's not really messy, it's just that I know where everything is so I don't like to move things around. So anyway, the first thing we're going to do is just take him all apart here. Oops, there goes his cigar. I always start with the head first, okay? So, oh, he's small. Believe it or not, this is a clean glass of water or a clean cup of water over here. I'm just going to take him. I think that's not glued in there, but I'll just leave, leave that in there for the moment and just dunk him in here. Just like that. Okay, I might as well do the same with this thing here. You can see I went ahead and carved the lines for his ascot there. Just put that in there. Put that back in there. Now for those of you who haven't been on my site before, the reason I do this is because when I paint, I like that paint to soak down into the wood. See? you just. If you scroll back there, you can see how bright and shiny this was after I pulled it out of the water. Well, notice that that shiny part has all gone away now because that water has soaked into the surface. And that's exactly what I want my paint to do. Now, for the helmet, we'll just do the same thing. Just dump the whole thing in there. Hopefully it won't mess my glue up, so I'm going to wipe the water off of that area. Not wiping it off, it's already soaked in. Probably wouldn't have soaked in there because I used uh, super glue to reinforce the front of the helmet. Leave that out here. Okay, the colors I'm going to use. Just disregard this, all this paint here is underneath the uh, except for that right there. This is what I use my old blades for. Scrape that glass. I use, put a piece of glass in my paint box here because this piece of glass allows me to see those colors whether they're opaque or transparent. And that's very important to me, as you will see. Okay, the colors I'm going to use for the face are red iron oxide. Let's do that a little here. And this is antique gold, but it's just yellow ochre is what it is. 
and I'll squeeze that a little bit there. Don't take much of that. Get my big brush out here. These are good quality brushes, believe it or not. I bought these things at least 30 years ago. You pay the money, you get what you pay for. And then I'm going to mix this up. my brush out. And a little more yellow in there. Now I'm only painting up to his eyebrows because he's got his helmet on hopefully all the time and uh, the sun would never reach up underneath there so he's going to have kind of a farmer's tan I'm not concerned about getting the paint over into other areas like his hair or anything because uh, the color we're going to be putting on that area, area, those areas, is darker than what we're painting right now, so that'll all be covered. This is about the most foolproof way to paint that you will find that gives an excellent result. Okay, now with that done, I'm going to get a little stronger color here. And right here on the edge of his eyes, paint that right there on his nose. No doubt he's had a few toots of the beverage there. been out to the sun so the sun catches up at those areas right there. And another thing, painting wet like this you can come back if you make a mistake wash wash away if you're real quick areas that uh, got a little dark Get a more red on his nose there the reason it's I keep going back to his nose is because I'm painting the end grain here so the, the, the structure of the wood grain running up and down, all those little capillaries are pulling this color down into the wood a lot more here than it will on the other surfaces like that. A little more on the lips. That looks good. Okay, so there we've got his flesh tone done. Now I'm getting out Midnight Blue.
one of my favorite cars. And I'm going to put just a teeny tiny bit right there. That's way too much. I won't be using hardly any of that. I got in there. I just want just a little bit. Now this is where this glass piece comes in. See, I can see the transparent transparency of that blue color, which is exactly what I want. And we're going to Paint the area of his beard to give him that five o'clock shadow. As I said, it don't take it don't take much to do this. And the reason why is while I'm doing this. I'm actually pulling away a lot of that flesh color that we put on there earlier. See there? Gives him a good a good five o'clock shadow. That looks pretty good. But see, we still have a little bit of right there on that end grain. See how it, the paint just soaks in? Now, the way to correct that, if you can't correct it here, is after you get your, after the paint's dry, the wood's dry, and the varnish has been applied, you can come back and touch up areas like that. And then, uh, after those, that's dry, it re a little bit over the top of that. That's just about the only way you can correct an area like that. That's why I got this paint here. I'm going to just kind of outline his ear there. dry. I think we'll do the helmet. And I always keep a tool around like this here. This is just a piece of stick with a sheet metal screw screwed on the end of it. And this gives me something to hold on to while I'm painting. Okay, first thing we're going to do for the helmet. What color do we want that helmet? We want it olive drab. So what makes olive drab? Well, brown. This is uh, raw umber, and that's not the color I want. Here's the color I want right there. Asphalt, this is a real rich brown. You can see the difference there. And I want a good green. Pine green. That's a good color right there. Pine green. Use it all the time. Squeeze out some of that. 
get my big brush. And we're going to paint the whole helmet with this color here. Pretty straight, lots of paint. Again, because I went and reinforced that uh, area around the rim of the helmet, this paint is not going to soak in there. So uh, we'll have to come back and I might just have to come back and fix those areas. Okay. See why right there. See there. Okay, now we got that. So now we put on the green. Really rub it in there. See there, it gives you a real good uh, all or drab appearance. turn off my timer. we got a few minutes left. I was hoping to get this thing done in one video, but it don't look like it. Okay, underneath here, I'm going to use this dark dark burn umber color. Put it on straight. And again, because there's a glue under here, it's not going to cover good, so you're just going to have to uh, take your time until you get it all covered the way you want it. We want this area down here really dark because this is where the head is going to meet the helmet. Now the color up here is kind of even so we're going to just splash on some dark here and I'm going to use a little bit of this yellow ochre put on there just to bust up the colors. We don't want everything looking the same color. This makes for a better appearance. Now, because of those glued areas, I'm going to mix up a little olive drab and put it on here and I'll have to come back after it dries to finish it and get it covered. Actually what I could do is use my heat gun
dry it out. And then just lightly brush it on there because you don't want to. Uh, and even doing this, you're probably still going to have to come back and touch it up a bit. But that helped quite a bit right there. Got to remember these helmets received received a lot of wear. God knows what kind of wear they received. So the paint is definitely not going to be. Even. That looks pretty good, I think. And then I'll come back with another brush here. And just repaint that stripe. Stripe, strip. Maybe add a little yellow to that just to lighten it up a little bit. pretty good. So I think that's going to do it for this video and uh, in the next video we'll finish this face, finish this helmet because well I mean you know you see you see where I'm going with the helmet so I'll fix that helmet and then we won't have to come back to it for that and then we'll do that there and we'll be on our way. So until then I'll talk to you later.